Okay, hello everyone. This is Smoke Dragon 2 here with a second installment of The Hazy Night. I at least got one comment and I got one support for doing this, so I'm gonna do it. And plus, I like it anyway, so. Anyway, here we go. As we left off, we left off on Adder and Elena. Or, wait, no, Anna here. Uh, looking over to the side about it, somebody walking toward them that they may or may not like may not like. Ina hasn't wasn't going to tell him either way, but coming this way he he was he was. He being Adder's most well worst one sided nightmare. All Motican of uh, Elun's Sulk, Tailed the Treasure, followed by his pale retainer. Our Rick. Whatever. Adder had Adder didn't even have time to help before the merchant, among merchants, politely announced his presence with an ancient greeting. To suck your mud, Miss Tess. I'm aware of how hectic the stall must be today, so I won't keep you long. I simply realized what a rare occasion it is to see you out in a crowd, so I thought I would take a moment to come and pay my respects to you. I hope you'll find some solace seeing a familiar face among the hustle and bustle. Anna's eyes turned sharply up away from Tilid, closely accompanied by the tip of her knife. The stag's head followed the motion only to find the eerily immobile set of here waiting by his side. Hmm. I understand the apprehension you feel towards my company, but I'm afraid these are the only escorts I can ever trust with my back anymore. It's a dangerous world out there for people like me. Speaking of which, where's your father? Has he considered my latest proposal? Or will I have to send any more of my people his way? He's a very ominous person. Is there treasure? Bone chart. Merchant among merchants. You know how it was back then. Hmm. Adder didn't miss the way Anna's fingers uh, clenched around the dagger she was sharpening. Oh, three! Oh, we completely forgot what day it is, boss! Oh, look how low the sun's already! Oh, what you burning daylight for? Ain't it time to do that thing you had to do? You know, that thing? The thing with the... stuff? Stuff. <laughs> to say that Aina had no clue of what Hatter was trying to do would be very... vastly understated. It would imply she had ever considered that Adder had enough wits to draw plans, or that she had the social acu acumen to pick up on them to begin with. In other moment. In 
any other moment, perhaps, or protagonist would have realized just how much he had in common with his boss. And I gotta pause at this right now. Sorry about that, had to uh, clean up a mess. Anyway. Let's see, where were we? And other uh, had in common with his boss. Right now, however, he couldn't help but fear the strange talent both Anna and Caleb had for ignoring his interruption. Right, well, I don't want you feeling like a wet shoe on our carpet most of the staff, but you, uh, you may want to go gut someone else for the time being. Ain't us for real busy today, and it don't look like the Patriot's planning to honor us with his presence, so, uh... Edder, needing to do anything more remarkable than put a hand on Anna's shoulder to make Caleb shoot a look in his direction at least at last maybe he's a jealous person i don't know that looks like it <laughs> it was but a brief glance a glance best reserved for a slow crawling up your leg. A glance so scalding that it could make weeds wilt and crumble to dust within seconds. The kind of glance that would normally precede the untimely death of an elegated, elongated yellow. As Adder's luck would have it, though, recognition set in in the merchant's gaze just as just at the right moment. An unsettling half smile formed on his face. Ah, yes, I remember you now, Geoff's little paramour, the oversized one-eyed fawn that wanted to be a knight. One Durandun for a full set of armor was what you requested, if I'm not mistaken. N nope! I, I mean, yep! I, I mean, sir, I never dare say you're mistaken, but I doubly not dare say so when it comes to numbers! Imagine it! Poor farm boy could barely count trying to tell the tailored how money works! Darn! Just think about it cracks me up! <laughs> no, sir, I can't! I just can't believe for one moment the most famous loner, loner in all of Ireland would be so kind to remember a dumb buck's dumb dreams, much less his ugly friggin' mug. Of course. I never forget a face, no matter how weathered or insignificant. That'd be remiss of me. Caleb nodded to himself thoughtfully, giving Adder a chance to discreetly crawl behind Anna. Despite the yellow stags, uh, desperate in her pleas, uh, Taylor's eyes soon shifted toward him again. Forgive my curiosity. I just can't help but wonder. How can a country boy with ambitions as great as yours go on living day after day, knowing he can't aspire to more than his deplorable life? Gioff can barely stay sober enough to feed himself, never mind someone twice his size. It must be exhausting, staying alive. Do you want me to kill you? Oh, I no, know. no, 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 not at all. We, we manage, sort of. Caleb's soft features grew closer to the ladder. But he barely even noticed. His only eye remained. It's not too late to consider the offer I made you back then. Let me put those deformed hands of yours to better use. I could give you the armor and the money to pay for it now, if you come work for me in the sewers. It won't be much worse than whatever the blind witch has you doing. That 
it's mighty kind of you, Mr. Talon, but uh, it's poor manners to consider job offers in front of your own boss. <laughs> you make a fair point. Perhaps once I've torn that red scab off our guild's back then. Kana. Kaled finished his farewell with a bow and thus left the money lending app. Money. Money lender. At last. Followed by the delayed ram of a fabulous march. Heather's body had somehow contorted into being nearly indistinguishable from Inna's at this point. He needed a few more seconds to thaw out. Divide the beeswax. I'm crawling out of my skin here. <laughs> Who the hell you laughing at now, huh? That weirdo ain't no joke, you hear me? Last time I talked to him, it only took me shoving my hoof in my mouth half a second to swish get a blade on my neck. And all I could see out of this eye was the creepy face of one of those golem th uh... And as ears perked up, though her gaze remained firmly locked on the blade. No, yeah, of course you'd find it funny, Mistress Miss Tess. Paying my respects sure is a fancy way of saying he got the hots for you. <laughs> ow, ow, ow! Adder barely avoided getting his liver punctured by an extremely <laughs> flustered Aina. Well, he... Well, if he didn't get his liver punctured, I hate to see what he actually got punctured. <laughs> he got fucking, he got fucking punched. From combo wombo'd. The hours passed by slowly and painfully, for they were completely ignored by the passerbys. Well, actually avoided. <laughs> is more like it rather than ignored. It was no surprise the merchant Adder's patron and his mute daughter were two of the most despised people in the city. In spite of the incredible variety of uh, antiquities and smithery that the merchant had for sale, no one ever bought a single thing. And there were plenty of reasons for that. Even Adder had some serious doubts about working on for an old barum man whose fur was redder than blood and an albino smith that insisted on dyeing her hair green. The fact that they worked independently from their trading guild probably had something to do with it as well. In any case, it was well after noon, and they hadn't done anything but sit around the whole day. <sighs> Adder pressed his lips together and began drumming his fingers against the floor. <sighs> Longer time. He looked askance at Anna, hoping his subtle call for attention had stirred her curiosity, but there was no answer. He'd have to be the one to actually break the silence, as usual. So, uh, hey, Anna. I bet you're still wondering just what in the world could make a hard-working buck like this one get here so late this morning. Ana stopped hitting the rock with the blade. She barely moved her eyes toward Adder. Well, buckle up, because there's a whole story there. <laughs> this got to stay between you and I, but... Uh... 
this morning. She has a look of complete and utter I don't give a shit. Well. Well, buckle up, because there's a whole story there. I just want to say this because I played this once and I like this option, which is I saw a gazelle, but not any gazelle. No, ma'am. She was the fanciest gazelle girl I've ever seen. And there she was in the slums, strutting her hip-shaking, earthquaking, heart-melting butt. <laughs> uh, that was that. That one was funny the first time I played it. But Saw no, this time I'm doing. Hold on a minute. I'm in a free check. This time I'm doing. I saw a beast, a for real beast. It got shiny, shiny eyes, and spiky, spiky ears, and it was so, so fluffy. So, so fluffy? Oh, and it got these weird sharp teeth like, nyaaah. Nothing. Uh, dot, dot, dot. Ain't no way that was a dream. Adger's attempt at starting some sort of one-way conversation fell short, yet another awkward silence ensued. He feared in those long seconds of quietness that his words hadn't been heard, or worse yet, they were. He was to be ignored for eternity! No, that couldn't be. He should have scared her to death. She'd never sleep again, fearing that beast. Oh God, I broke her. <laughs> what have I done? Adder cried internally, thinking of all the possible outcomes where he'd driven his boss to madness. Madness, I say. Don't you worry about a thing, boss. <clears throat> I'll be keeping an eye out for any beast that want a good old-fashioned ass whooping. You ain't got nothing to. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait. With her usual lack of haste. Would make something like that up. And before I continue, if you do, if you go for the direction that of the first choice that I made, which is, you know, the earth thing, it's a very interesting little trust you to trust me, who's gonna trust to trust me at all? I don't know, uh, 
that is an interesting way of looking, you know, I mean... Who can I trust to trust to trust to trust me? If I can't trust to trust to trust you... To trust me... To trust what I'm saying about trust! Does this trust from this seep in? I don't know. <laughs> the best way to define a smile at that precise moment would be terrifyingly mean. While her bad temper was known and feared among other persons, it was usual for her. this change and he wasn't going to keep it to himself of course you're acting real ugly boss oh well, now that's something and uh, no now that's going a bit too far oh you, you made her sad you made the poor albino sad it's it's okay it's okay the smile on her face vanished, replaced instead by a grimace. And she went back to her doodling. In response to this affirmation, I merely shifted her gaze back to the blade and resumed her task, pretending she hadn't heard him. But if Adder was known for one thing, it was his incessant need to stick his nose in everyone's business. What's wrong, Ain? A wrinkle formed over her nose as she focused on keeping calm, but Adder didn't get the message. Come on, don't just keep everything to yourself. You know, there ain't a single thing in the whole of Dot Nah you can't tell me. No sooner he'd finished his sins, Aina slammed the dagger she was sharpening against the ground. If Effectively sinking the tip in the ground. Right. I know there ain't a single thing you can tell me either. This is one of them metaphors things Gaff loves. He says that a hushed mouth ain't got nothing on an open heart. And I uh, got up all of a sudden. Her face red in anger. Adder was preparing himself mentally for the beating that he'd expect. But instead, she just plopped down on the ground, sitting with her back against his. Or dear Buck was puzzled to say the least, but, An but Aina didn't even make a sound. She just sat behind him, completely still, hidden from the public's eye. Of course, the possibility of getting a whack, getting whacked in the head, was now more real than ever, so Adder didn't even attempt to guess why she even do that. Ah, <sighs> what was the patron thinking? Well, he probably didn't expect you two to play, <laughs> um, hide and seek in the stall. Big guy. I mean, very big. Adder and Aina immediately jumped away from each other, doing their first best attempt at looking half professional, uh, dangerous laugh of reservation over the interrupted <laughs> Whatever, thank you. Helogram? It's respectable Illigrab Bontalos to you, boy. But please, uh, don't hold back on my account. I'll just look the other way. What? And there's the merchant. 
And yet, so appeared the man that was so red that it would seem that he'd stolen all the color his daughter was black. Patron! Ah, so he gets the respectful treatment and I don't. I see how it is. Yeah, I see how it is. I, I, I see. What's that salacious doll cop doing to my daughter now? They're just strengthening their ties of friendship. Ah, or is this a budding love? <laughs> The merchant shook his cane, Hitty Eela grabs a twiggy leg with a loud thunk. The tree man just wiggled his mustache in his mouth. Whoa, 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 uh, Hold up, hold up. We weren't doing anything, patron. That's the problem, you come aground! You light a sack! You... <coughs> <laughs> A coffin bit saved Adder from more old timey insults, which would barely comprehend. Once he recovered, the merchant put his uh, bearded face next to Adder's, resting the tip of his cane on Adder's face. He opened his toothless mouth slowly, his breath reeking more light. You haven't sold a single thing, have you? Now, now, that's hardly their fault, Red. I'm sure this old son was just frolicking with my daughter as usual. She's old enough to frolic as she pleases. She hasn't even come of age yet. Of course she hasn't. There's no way for her to pass that right. Of course there is! She just needs to open her mouth and stop being an idiot! The only idiot here is the one talking, patron. Ain't is just mute. I wish that rub off on you! And maybe you'd learn to keep your mouth shut when adults are talking! Well, it looks like she, it looks like she wants to say something, or wants to get their attention, but... Yeah, and they're not doing shit. But I did pass the coming of age right, sir! I got them adult horns and... And now he's like, yeah. I'm, I'm... Shut up! Don't you have anything to say about this, insolent child? Ain't I? She walked away while you two were arguing. Then why didn't you say so sooner, you overgrown sapling? Hmm. Uh, well, uh, she looked like she needed it. This is all your fault and yours. He stabbed Ader's nose with the tip of his finger. What did I do? That stupid child's been acting up since you first. Don't blame the poor boy. She's always had an attitude, and you know it. I don't care! You two better go bugger off somewhere else! Or I swear to Arab that I'll hit you so hard that you'll be cropping out your teeth for a week! Both Hatter <laughs> and Illicrab went a little. Got that? Okay. Now hold up, what? Come on, Adder! Those two clearly want some alone. And he'll have plenty of that when I leave him tied to the pyre next time I find a mob outside the shop. Illigrab took Adder by the cage and looked at him. It didn't take Illigrab long to notice Adder's unusual... reticence. reticence. Please, don't let Red's words affect you. He's, uh, worse today. There's a storm coming from the west, and it's making us old people nervous. <laughs> no, the patron can preach and holler all he want. That don't bother me much. I mean, 
I don't cry anymore, at least. What he said to Aina, though? Now that's going two paces past the league too far. So what if she can't swear the oath thing? The three won't get mad at her for being mute. And anyway, Aina don't gotta pass no right. It ain't like she's getting married any day soon, right? There, there. Got it all out of your system, boy. <sighs> you know what? All this stuff I'm saying means radish stew if I don't say it to her face. I gotta find her, make sure she's all right. Iligrav didn't reply at that last affirmation. He placed Adder carefully on the ground and passes his cape to straighten it. Well, in that case, I have to go back to keeping watch on the fair. So, this is where we say goodbye for today. Hey, I'll send someone to fetch you if I see her, okay? Adder nodded resolutely. They, they waved goodbye. Adder noted uh, I think they were good back to each other and then the buck just stood there wondering where to start looking. Assuming she was still in the bazaar. Finally! I thought that fluffy bastard was never leaving. Gelf Gelf walked into the scene with a huge smile as the giant disappeared in the distance. Afternoon, Mr. Bard. Oh, lad, what a face. Well, see, it's a long... Ah, not a word. Thy mean speaketh clearer than thy tongue doeth. You're hungry. Nah, no, I ain't in the mood to... Well, I am. And I can't play a song when my stomach's growling a gazelle. Let's get some fried leaves. Sorry, Bard. I ain't got time for any of that. I gotta go look for Aina. She just ran away angry as all get out, and I know darn well if I don't go check up on her, no one's gonna... And I thought my songs were monothematic. Get... Get off. Pick the strings of his own one by one. Deep in thought, well, I'd heard just paced about. I know just the place to look. Gyalf expertly snuck through the crowd, moving to such. Adder did his best to keep up with him. The place Gyalf was looking for wasn't in the plaza itself, surrounded by stalls. It was. It was in an alleyway. The crowd there was bustling to life as usual, but they were all out of here. A Carmere Alley. Carmere Alleys were very different from the official sort, while killing was still very much frowned upon. There was no chivalry, no one set of rules. There was no way of knowing if the horns you were being gored with were hygienic. There were punches and kicks and all sort of cheats. It was chaos. And for that, and several other reasons, Anna was a huge fan of unofficial. She kept out. Sadly, as much as Edgar jumped and pushed and yelled, she wasn't anywhere to be found. Alas, your fair maiden is in another alley. Nice Mario reference. Asher casts a long glance over the improvised battlegrounds, attempting to find her one. That's too bad. I need to kick some serious ass here. Good thing she's not allowed to fight. Yeah, ain't no way they're gonna let a doe. A golem at her. Gyoth cast a very serious look in his direction. 
this wasn't the first time they'd had this discussion, and it wouldn't be the last. How many times do I gotta tell you? Aina is not a golem, okay? She's a doe. It's just she's alba... Alba... A bit of a weirdo. Weirdo. Right. Tell me, Adder dearest, how many albino does can you name off the top of your head that can lift your heavy butt with just one hand? Aina! Now let's go! We gotta find her! <sighs> Why do I even bother? Look at her. Golem or not, she's just a little cabbage head hiding in the crowds of this enormous city. She's damn good at hiding. And do you know why people hide? Because uh they don't want to be found. Jolf extended his arms toward him in a dramatic manner, remarking how correct he was. You're not gonna find her. So why don't you go and use your thick skull for something useful? Like bringing us money so we can have dinner for once. Joff pointed at the ring with his horns. And Adder knew better than to insist. With a heavy sigh, Adder nodded and began walking toward the ring. Ah, wait, there's just one. Your bag of coins. You wouldn't want to lose what little we have to the hands of, say, some ill-intentioned crook. Now we Better the evil you know. Better the evil you know. That's right. Joel extended his hand a bit too keenly, waiting for Adder to find the purse and insisted he usually had with Stash, but... Whoa! Bard! <laughs> You're... Don't tell... Ah, uh, yeah. Alrighty then. Yolf's scrawny body trembled like branch about to snap off. Yolf is probably my spirit animal. At least whenever it comes to money. Yeah, he probably is my spirit animal. Just go. All right. See that sweaty black head over there with the glistening fur and that charming smile? That's your, That's foe. your foe. I'll go place my bet now. Are you feeling like a winner? Charming? Oh, hold up. You mean the guy with them sharpened horns? Oh, darn, B Bard. Your confidence in this poorly put together row is much appreciated, but as much as it hurts me, and it does, I think I'd rather go to bed hungry today. What? What, what? if he hits me in the face? I don't want to go from out of the one-eyed to out of the no-eyed! Then do enlighten me, my boy, on how in the name of the hat, sir, do you pretend to become a knight if you can't handle even a rat pointed at you? No wonder you can't even catch a hint. Yellow piece of mangy venison. <sighs> what are you mumbling there, Goff? I said I'm going to walk you through this. So, oh, help me three if you mess up. Hey, let this die with. And a girl, you sure eat your veggies. But all the sticks on your forehead, I can't fool anyone. <laughs> If he's serious, this is gonna be easier than I thought. <gasps> wait, 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 there's a fight coming up? Holy horns, you have to tell me everything about it. What kind of fighting style did Adder use? Was it antler rattling? He was a rattler, right? Did he prefer grappling or thrusting? Or was he more of a brawler instead? Swish, swish, bam! Pushing them right in the... Wait, did they even have any hand wraps his size? Dot, dot, dot. Uh, uh, give me a moment. I, I, I think I have to sneeze. What were any of those words? I don't really know the rules of the... The card may. I thought you just did people until they found them. Oh, God. Nothing. 
hiking team up with is going to tell her off the her expectations. Deal with the pressure. Yeah. It's you. You said he knew the night like the palm of the The new bearer of a title of this magnitude should be able to put a miserable fight scene all over, all on their own, if that's the thing. Prove your worth of your name. Oh my god, you're right! Yes, this is my moment to shine! Leave it to me! Yes. Good. I shall go and lead to it so as to not influence you. Let's see. What would the knight do? Right! He needed a few tips first. So Gyov took Adder aside and held him under his arm. Yay! <laughs> He said, Adder, mine lad, tis a dangerous fight that awaits us. But if not in the strength of thy body, I believe it in the strength of thine heart. What would thee sayeth is the greatest feat a fighter should at each moment striveth for. Well, diggity yee haw, bard. What a tootin' rootin' mighty fine question that is. Adder nodded thoughtfully to himself and then continued, I reckon that would be... Oh, God. Uh, is this going countryfied? Is this going pure countryfied? My lord have mercy, this is going pure countryfied by the grapes of all that is holy. If I see you on this damn property again, by Lord have mercy, I will skin you alive and I will feed you to chickens. Well, it is only one word of honor. Honor, as expected of a knight, dearest friend. Thou shalt be a rattler then. Ah, honorable style amongst honorable styles. The way our ancestors squareth, where two deer shalt proveth the might of their horns rather than that of their mind. But hoy, bard! Yelped at her. Mine horns are so. Yelp smirked. This is where your strength lieth, mine this otter. Horn. There is an advantage to short horns, thou see. No one shall be able to lock their horns around yours to grapple thee to the ground. Your advice is now unwise, Yelp. This is why I love you so very much. Adder, you beautiful boar. Everyone will find out if thou keepest talking so loud. Oh god. She's a fan fake writer, isn't she? Yeah, we. Lay the whole world bask in the warmth of our. Oh, Adder! Smooch! Smooch! Smoochy! Smooch! Uh. <clears throat> Lynn, how's that scene going? Ah, it's going! It's going! Adder found himself alone at last. His ears were almost blurred. The people surrounding the ring. Minds were starting to pop in his eyes. And make his The ringmaster looked left and right, making sure the fighters knew that they were about to go about to fight. He lifted his arm carefully, stepped back, and then go, he screamed to the back and come. Charge! This was no time to hesitate, both the ringmaster on the rush forward.
the tension crew and could be cut with a knife as a but Jules advice proved that unhearing as much as he tried to be tried to be your ears but not in mind as he turned around as a short uh the answer was clear of course the garage of sweat punches to the other deer's face would have Tired of this point in stance, the deer pushed Adder back with a swift head motion before Adder had a chance to react. His bow slammed his head below the rose chest, knocking all the air out of him and lifting him right off the ground with me. And now back. not tell if that was the sound of Adder's neck or Adder's teeth as his face hit the ground with full speed, but little did that matter for uh, nothing lay more broken than his dreams. And you're dead to everyone. Thank it over. After such a shameful defeat, the right after such a shameful defeat, the writer decided to take a page from Adder's book. Literally, she began writing these words as a means to stall her own anxiety as she tried to understand how she managed to take herself into. Such a narrative hole. She had clearly made a mistake somewhere. It was obvious to her pro prodigious. Prodigious man. We obviously have a Digimon fan somewhere in the somewhere among the authors. Prodigious. Yeah. And that's prodigious mind that a boy so Preoccupied with doing what was good and true and right, you would hardly be willing to do whatever it took to serve victorious a pungent space for himself and his own history. Or wonderful, our wonderful narrator started to realize that perhaps she had misunderstood something about Adder, for she could picture no scenario where a well-meaning upstanding street fighter could even get past his first night in Slant Land. Oh my, the <laughs> of Akiza's true descendant. True descendant of uh, the of the night. 
O Ma Lin D. Billy. O Ma Linda Billy. O Ma Linda Billy. O O Ma Linda Billy. Yeah, I like Lynn better. Short it to Lynn. It's easier to it's it's easier to it's easier to say easier to moan to, uh. Yes. Decided to revisit her decision. Thank you more. Uh, deeply. Victory! Ah, so thou art a brawler, dearest friend. I have indeed taught death you well. There is no honor in death. If thine horns will not aid you in battle, use those hands the gods gave you. Pummel them to the ground. Thou shalt win this fight and prevail. But hoy, bard! Yelped at her. Mine hands are so boggling, I beg! Yuff smirked. All the better to swat their faces away. If they trieth to thrust towards thee with their large horns, thou shalt only need to slap them into the ground. Stand victorious over those who would hurt you, mine adder. And then they smooched again, but quickly. <sighs> You can tell she's a fan, she's a galley writer, and she is a fanfic writer. <laughs> Edder found himself alone at last, his dearest friend loved the blah 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 the towering gear charged toward Adder like a runaway fury. Runaway fear, horns were blind and ready to swing in with a full force of stampede, but the road didn't move to see it. Adder nearly was silent. All of the places that screamed. He just avoided it, opening his eyes. Trick! Adder spun on the tip of his hooves and struck his opponent with such force that he swat him straight into the ground. And you may think, wow, that that's kind of anticlimactic, but it was everything. Everything but both the public and the ringmaster tilted their heads as they stared at the man lying on his snout. A bit unsure about the nature of the event they had witnessed, but what they saw was nothing but the truth. Taking your advice to heart, Adder obtained a beautiful, simple victory. Down! Screamed the ringmaster. Adder won the fight. Wait, so he wins? Of course he wins. He's the knight, you doof. I. Right, never mind then. Uh, well done, Lynn. <laughs> I'm pretty great, yes. Now, what's that? What's this torn page you're trying to hide behind your back? Wait, don't! Uh, dot dot dot. Dot dot dot. D. 
dot 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 brush. So anyway, dot dot dot. Whoa! I can't believe it. Still alive and kicking. <laughs> Come on, show me the money, Bard. I want to bite every single coin. Cut, cut, cut. I completely forgot to place the bet. <laughs> Gilf covered his face with his hands, making some sort of unintelligible noise that could only be described as the sound of anguish. Oh, God. I forgot the money. Hey, big ad. I want to learn some tips, too. <laughs> I'll buy you dinner. Hey, now, sir. You really think you're going to steal my manager away, so... Gilf! Shut Adger snout with one finger. My dear boy, you sure gave it all today, so why don't you go and enjoy what's left of the fair? I have a... Gig in the tavern later. <laughs> Money, yes. Don't expect me tonight. With that, Gilf hurriedly shoved, hurriedly shooed a very confused adder away. Our protagonist wandered back towards the increasingly empty and silent plaza, unaware of where he was headed to next. And with that, I will leave that second episode right there. As always, like, comment, subscribe, please, share as well, to more people so that I can probably grow a little bit. Anyway, um, I'll see y'all later. Take care. Bye-bye now.